brand new episode of Geektopia. And as per usual, I don't like to be the only person talking all the time. So we get some friends involved for Geek Squad to discuss and dissect something which has come out quite recently. We've covered Bling Empire. We've covered Lupa. Covered quite a few things so far. I'm really impressed. Sadly, Bridgerton was on that list as well. <sighs> but anyhow, uh, LeVar Burton, Levy, as I like to call you, Hadis. Aaron, a Aaron, Kevin J for the very first time, one of Malaysia's funniest men. You might have seen his Netflix special. If you haven't, go check it out for some. Dude, I'm right here. <laughs> you don't have a Netflix special. I'm sorry, Papi. Oh, Zay. is that is that how we judge the funniest people in the world now? Don't yes. we all? Don't we all? Global attraction, Kevin J. Anybody in the entire world, any country, and I believe all of them do now have Netflix. He is available. Also, with a very sparkly beard, which is kind of creepy in the show. Let's not get into <laughs> it. Uh, Mo is one Kamal, no relation to puppy Zach Kamal, and also Chief Jantan as well. We've all watched Raya and the Last Dragon. This was unique because it's the first show that none of us had watched because. Well, it wasn't out yet, so we've all had a chance to, to check it out. And uh, I, I will say I really enjoyed the animation. That's it. The, is that <laughs> it? Like, I really enjoyed the animation. It's like, it's like saying I really enjoyed the casting. It's like good effort. Good <laughs> That's effort. was your comment. The anim animation looked really good, but I just felt the story was a little bit tried and tested. It followed the same tropes, particularly towards the end particularly for me. But I'm going to ask this to Carvin first about what he thought overall, because you have a daughter. How old is she now? She's eight. Did she watch the movie with you? She watched bits of it because she's, you know, not very good at paying attention for two hours. Uh -huh. But but I, I have the same uh, opinion as you, I think. Uh, the fact that it was tried and tested. I think it was pretty much uh, a remake of Brave. And to an extent, Moana, because since yes. Moana, they, they've and Frozen as well, the female protagonists in the shows don't have a love interest. They're driven more by mm -hmm. being strong leaders, not being mm -hmm. defined by a man. So I think that's <laughs> that's like Moana, Frozen, and now of course Riot and the Last Dragon. But did she feel inspired by it in any way? Was she drawn to it, Gavin? Oh yeah, I mean at the at the end, you know, a little bit of you know, like it pulls on your heartstrings and. And you know, very emotional stuff. Uh, you know, especially with dads and and family, and everybody is like, "Oh no, trust is the most important thing." I, I mean, I guess it it appeals to the audience that they made the movie for, and and clearly we are not that audience. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> clearly. Yes. I mean, you know, we want some blood and go. I guess I get I, that's for me. But you know, at, at the end of the day, I think it it it. It does what it set out to do. So I guess in that sense, it's okay. Uh, Mo, you, I know you have a kid around you quite frequently. Did you watch it alone or with that person? I, I watched it with that, that kid for the first half because I was I was just had a long day. So I, I <laughs> fell asleep and I just continued in the morning. Okay. <laughs> but I'm, I'm with you. Uh, I felt the story was predictable. But I think what saved it for me were like the characters. Like my favorite was the baby and the three monkeys. Mm -mm -mm. You know, they were they were con <laughs> artists. <laughs> like, yeah. wait, okay, so that they're from that tribe of conning and stealing, and it made sense. Like, wow, you got conned by a baby. That's how good that tribe was. You know, yeah. We're called Angies. 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 Zach, you were like a child. So, did you like it? Surprise, surprise. Guess what? I did like it. You did like Bling Empire as well, so that says a lot. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, like my horn. But what, what did you like about it? Yeah, gr great effort with the costume. But what did you like about it? What, what makes you say that? Okay. Um, as far as Disney movies, it's always... You, you know what to expect from a Disney movie. Uh, you know, heartfelt, um, you know, um, lessons to be learned, and... You you expected like each I think uh, Disney with each of their animated uh, movies come up with like different aspects of like you know life lessons that we should learn we should grow up to be right and in this case it's about you know world conflict you know uh, when all the tribes were gunning for that one uh, gem so to speak like the, the crystal yeah. I felt like you know uh, I was I was telling Kevin this you know if this was the real world it'd be like America. Uh, England, Russia, <laughs> and China all gunning for that. No, we should have the nuclear power. No, we should have it. America should have it because we are Americans, you know? 
and it's about yeah it's like trust so i i kind of like um uh what uh, felt uh, uh what uh Connected, connected. Yeah, yeah. there was definitely connected. definitely a message there because it's a very fractured world we live in. Yes, uh, just and the, uh, you know the elections, the whole the whole like you know, women empowerment. <laughs> wow, that. Why was that a quote? Why is that a quote? <laughs> Why I said quote it. Come on, that? I said it. Come on. <laughs> what is that? <laughs> Doesn't it? Be back when the, the the prince did nothing but show up at the end and then uh, save the princess by kissing him. No, no. Uh, <laughs> I, I respect the, the the new direction that Disney is going with, and um, it's it's good. It's just it's it's just another tale for uh, little girls to like uh, live up to, and you know, it's like, hey, look, you girls don't be have you don't have to be play second fiddle anymore. You know, you you can be out there and be your own woman. True, just, but it's true. You know, women do have trust issues. Come on, <laughs> that that oh. that is. Yes, I said, said yes. You no. Know? <laughs> uh, uh, coming away from Very that for a moment, uh, you know, I want to put myself uh, in a position where I have no connection to Zach's opinions, mm. and also the fact that look, we all forget that also this is a Disney movie, lah. The fact that look, at the end of the day, we watched it on TV and not on the cinema, like you know, most Disney movies usually is. But the fact, the thing is, we kind of forget that this is a Disney movie, mm. and also the fact that because it's, it's very different from all the other Disney movies that we see. Uh, the fact that you know it's it's also it. I, I think we we need to make sure that we know that you are watching a Disney movie, and it's very Disney. It's very Disney. It's got everything a Disney movie has: a Disney princess, a, a you know a moral of the story. It's very heartfelt. It, it's all everything. Like everything is there. I want to get to the girls in just a moment, but but because Zach brought up uh, something for for young girls. Because Kevin, you have a young girl in your life who's eight years old, and yeah. I don't think she looks up to you and thinks, "Oh, I want to be a bald, bearded, forty-year-old <laughs> guy when she's older." Do you feel that that Raya is someone that she could look up to on some level? Yeah, I guess. I mean, the thing is, you know, I'm I want to let her be whatever she be. It's like I I'm not gonna mold her and say this is what you need to be. No. Uh, but however, she is turning out to be very girly, very you know, Disney princessy and. You know, like the whole. I mean, I I don't know about boys just yet. I mean, hopefully, I don't have to worry about that until she's thirty. <laughs> But also the fact that, uh, you know, I mean, I I don't have hopes and dreams like I want her to become like this or become like that. So I mean, she likes what she likes. That's the whole thing. She likes uh she likes it when I play you know video games like Assassin's Creed. She she watches it and she 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 does sword play as well and. She likes Disney princesses in the same time, and you know My Little Pony. Like you know, that's where Zach got his horns from. So, yeah, it's, it's it's one of those things where she likes both sides, and I'm like, yeah, that's fine. As long as as long as she's a good person, I don't care lah. Yeah, well, shout out to your wife, who I think has got like a PhD. So there's an influential yes. figure in her life, yes. As opposed to a bearded bald man. Who's... Yes. No, I mean, look, <laughs> for the first seven years of her life, she wanted to become a comedian, which uh, got me worried. But now she wants to be a scientist like her mom. So I'm like, yeah, okay, that's fine. Yeah, hey. that's very, very Asian hey. to say as well. I got a PhD too. In Pretty oh. huge. <laughs> <laughs> Diploma, but honestly, <laughs> we we really need to bring in Levy and Hadis here. But Levy first, because you are Southeast Asian. No offense, Hadis, uh, <laughs> but the film is also about representation for Southeast Asia. Do you care that some of the characters are voiced by East Asians and not Southeast Asians? Because there's a controversy around that. And secondly, how much does representation matter to you as a Southeast Asian woman with a hero like Raya, who's a Southeast Asian woman? I think I didn't mind <clears throat> that the voice actors were not Southeast Asian. It doesn't matter to me overall. Like I'm happy that there's a Southeast Asian movie, Disney movie now. But like, uh, I mean, I I didn't really like the movie. I don't know why. I felt like it's just like a typical Disney movie. I'm not a big fan of Disney, you know. And every it was like I mean. I like certain Disney movies, but I won't watch it like over and over and again, or this and that. Like everyone grew up with Disney movies, you know, and everyone has their own opinions on any movies. But this movie is like I couldn't even pay attention throughout the whole movie. <laughs> <laughs> like I felt like okay. some parts were like very draggy, like 
repeating parts like she and the close the princess namari yeah namari fight and stuff like that but yeah you i realize now every time we do something except for bridgerton for some strange reason <laughs> which you recommended you're like oh, i don't not really sure about lupa not really sure about bling empire not really sure about white tiger your bar is set extremely high unless it's trashy tv i think mm. <laughs> it. trashy tv at that yeah i guess <laughs> so we know we know what you like but what hadis cuz you've been in malaysia for quite a long time now yes and well, what did you, what did, counting <laughs> but, but Eight years and counting. Eight years and counting. So that's like not quite half of your life. Maybe let's put it at over a third of your life here in Malaysia now. Malaysia But, now, really Malaysia. Yeah, pretty much the Malaysian. But do you think it represents Southeast Asia as someone who's come from the outside world into this part of the world? I think it did uh, represent bits and pieces of each country. Like I could see like. the way that they represent each country in a different way like for example we had like malaysian indonesian thai and all like throughout the whole uh, animation like for example the 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 pet was tuk tuk which is in thai means the transportation and also at the end the pet was a transport method for raya and also the name raya which is a malay celebration So it's like in bits of pieces they tried to bring out the Southeast Asia's representation into the movie which is nice to watch. I mean I did enjoy Crazy Rich Asian and also to get the sound I mean like the voice over which are not Southeast Asian but at least they are also Asian. They didn't cast other than H like I mean too far from Asia to do the voice over so which is nice and I like Sisu also. Akopina is like killing it. Yeah, she was definitely the highlight for me yeah. uh, of all the voice actors. A A1, what about you? I enjoyed the the movie a lot actually. Uh, I'm a Disney kind of guy lah. Uh, uh, mm. Yeah, I would say I'm a Disney kind of guy. Uh, I'm not gonna lie, okay, that I teared a bit in one part. I'm not gonna lie. Which right? part? The part where they all turn into stone. The very moment when the kid hugged uh, Raya. that very moment because for a kid that you know you you have lost everyone you know to put that trust into someone that is just betrayed someone that you follow you know like raya and and that very moment uh, that that was the, the the highlight that i just like oh my god he already lost everything and he's putting all the trust in someone who just betrayed raya so yeah he has that, nothing left you know apart from hades who was clapping i noticed mo was smiling when you said that as well i'm not sure why yes because uh even though I said earlier the story was a bit predictable. I agree with Zach that it did have that and Kevin as well that it did have that, you know, that that sparkle of Disney like this that's mm-hmm. hope. And you know, and what you said uh, Adam about uh, the message there's uh if the world would be better if we trusted each other more. Mm. And I and that's and that's all his nice message no matter how old you are. Uh, I agree with Aaron because I too was tearing at that scene. That moment, <laughs> right? Yeah, that that very oh, moment. Where get back in here, tear! Get back in there, tear! You know, like <laughs> what is happening? Wait, what? So I thought I thought it was just a. Uh, I'm a sucker for those kind of scenes where you know mm-hmm. human human beings are uh, selfless. <laughs> what about? I also the like to point out. I would mm-hmm. also like to point out that uh, the voice for Tuk Tuk was Alan Tudyk. Uh, yes. Yes. Just, just so you all know. Yes. Like, they had they got the biggest white actor. to come in and do the most minimal sound in the whole movie. You're getting a little too big for this, bud. What about the man of the stone cold heart who doesn't show much emotion? Mm. Uh, uh, Chief Jantan. Oh. No, he, he he can show emotion at times. <laughs> no, Chief no, no, Jantan. No. Well, I show emotions, man. Um. No, he doesn't. He, he doesn't fit here on his face. Facially he doesn't show emotion, but inside he feels it. What did you make of it? Um, I mean, I like the representation, but I couldn't get past the fact that when I saw the dad, right, I could see Daniel Day Kim's face right there himself. Mm. And then every time Okafina says something, I can just imagine the face. I can't look at the dragon and not imagine how she looks like. And I, I keep thinking of Crazy Rich Asians and how she was there. So she's. I could just keep thinking of that. But um, I agree with most of what you guys said. The trust thing is, of course, really good. Uh, one thing I. 
that caught me also was like, I think all the dads in like, Disney movies, right? They're, they either die or they turn to stone or they... <laughs> you know? get the Uncle Ben treatment. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> ben treatment. <laughs> and, yeah, so... At least he appeared in it because the mom already dead. So she never shows her yeah, face. Yeah. Parents have a bad, bad time in all the Disney movies. But, but isn't that what the one of the things about a Disney princess is? That they always have either like a fractured relationship with their parents or most likely they're dead or they've disappeared. That's usually one of the things that would like a checkbox for being a Disney princess. Yep. Yes. Quite often. Uh, I'm also, who was the strongest voice actor for you, Carvin? You mentioned Alan Tudyk, but Gemma Chan was in it. I think Aquafina did a really good job with these two. I think you know, it, it, uh, Jantan, uh, the Jantan chief, the Jantan. Yeah, I just call him Jan. 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 Uh, Jan. Jan. But at this point, uh, I think yeah, you it, it's it's very hard to to hear Aquafina's voice without looking at the face. And I like the fact that you know they drew the the dragon's face according to the voice as well. Uh, I think you know. It, it really looked like her in the first. I think, yeah, I think Aquafina did a really good job. Uh, but here's the thing: I I wanted to say as well that yeah, it's it's apparently you know uh, Southeast Asian cultures. It's not really based on any Southeast Asian culture. It's just reference to Southeast Asia. It's it's got nothing to do with with uh, you know the fact that this is based on South. No, no, it's not. It's just reference. Yeah. You reference, reference. To Korean, and that's Malaysia. And then you reference a tuk-tuk that's Thailand. And then, you know, there's some clothes that are very Indonesian Bali. That's Indonesia. And then basically that's, that's where it ends. Like there's no, there's no actual depiction of uh, Southeast th- Asian. Culture. I think it, yeah. it was borrowing cultural elements. For example, Raya fights the sticks. Those are Kali sticks. Yes. yes. Which are from the Philippines. And then uh, they have basically the night market, mm. you know, where, where the thieves the are. Floating is, market, yeah. The floating night market. The floating night market. Yeah, the Pasa Malam. And it, I think it just borrowed elements of right. tying yeah. themselves down to one area. The clothing is a huge giveaway as well. The hat, which uh, Raya wears. That straw hat. The yeah. straw hat as well. So that I think could it's be just, Japan. It could be Japan. It could be Japan. Uh, yeah. Just borrowing elements from, from absolutely everywhere. You would bring up where you were raised, Zach, of course. Yeah. Like Japan for you. <laughs> Well, just to add on to that, I think the disconnect that uh, most of you are feeling about the movie is it didn't um, it didn't come from like any source of like particular Southeast Asian. Like it wasn't a Thai folklore. It wasn't a Filipino or Vietnamese folklore or Malaysian mm. or Balinese. Right. It was just just visually they were just uh, implementing the Southeast Asian feel. It's so, like ready player one for Southeast Asia. <laughs> Uh, uh, yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah, you, yeah. you throw in a lot of things there, and then yeah. You- so unlike Moana, where you like you know um, Polynesian people can relate to that character, or uh, Brave, where it was more Scottish people, like yeah, I could be that girl. Man. <laughs> Scotland yeah. is a say, very niche- say it, Adam. Say Scot- it. Scotland's a very niche <laughs> market to appeal to, you know. <laughs> but um, people- like what Kevin said, right? I I was looking for Malaysian Easter eggs, right? I saw satay. Mm. I saw like. Raya's sword was like Chris, like a yeah. giant Chris. Mm. Yeah. You know? And when they fought, she knew she knows Silat. Yeah. It's Silat uh, martial mix, arts. Mixed Start, with, yeah. mix with uh, using the Kali sticks yeah. as well. And I, I think I appreciate that the writers were South Asian, right? I think Adele Lim is Malaysian. One, yes. One writer. One, yeah. writer one of the writers, Adele Lim, who is Malaysian as well. She was involved in Crazy Rich Asians. Right. But I was watching, I was like, it seems that Hollywood have just decided that these are the actors we're going to go to for any uh, Asian representation effectively. I mean, the only one missing was Henry Golding. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Levy's so, favorite. So is Levy's Henry favorite. Golding East Asian or Southeast Asian? Uh, technically, he's Southeast Asian, isn't he? Technically, yes. But Ronnie Chang, is he East Asian or Southeast Asian? He's... Like, that, that's where, I mean, that's how... Yeah, it... like, we, you have to kind of make a, this thing as well, right? I think that in Southeast Asia, it will be very picky, but I'm not sure the rest of the world will know the difference. Yeah. Oh damn, Adam. So hence why all these East Asians they don't know the difference. Like you know the fact that all East Asians voice the characters. Mm. And, you know the, the, to 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 a person from Idaho, uh, they're not gonna know Aquafina, Southeast Asian, East Asian, West Asian, or South Asian. Uh, they don't care. Storm in a teacup. Yeah. Storm in a teacup. Perhaps people will never be truly happy. Uh, would you want to see a sequel to this, 
Levy, you would probably have no interest in watching a sequel, would you? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> yes. Nothing for you. No. If they made a sequel, you wouldn't watch it. No. If they made a live action version, would you watch it? Maybe. You mean Maybe. like Mulan? Like yeah, like, oh like Mulan. God. Which they dropped the dragon for, which would be impossible yeah. for this. Depends on how and uh, who who is acting. If Henry Golding's in it, why would he be in it? Because by the time they do a live action, he'd be that old. To be, <laughs> that, to play yeah, the he, he could play the father, <laughs> Southeast Asian. <laughs> <laughs> wow, Hadis. I will watch the live action, but I will not watch. It. I mean, I don't think the story can have a sequel or something to like go on. So I don't know if sequel would come. Yeah, I don't think it's as mm. iconic as Aladdin or like you know one mm. of those where it's really iconic and it just transcends all the the years. It's not one of those. Also, also I think the fact that they would make a live action. The only reason they made live actions of the movies that they had before was to reintroduce it to a new generation with new technology. So in the time that it would take for this to become a live action would be fifteen twenty years from now, which by then the technology would be even. You know, you probably could be in the movie like a VR thing where yeah. you, you know, you plug yourself into the Matrix and basically, Ooh. you know, become the dragon. The only reason they would make a live action remake was to reintroduce to a new generation with new technology. Yeah. So there is no reason for it to be remade into a into a live action right now. Like you know, like like. But it's Disney. No, it, I know it's Disney, but no. I know they want to make money. But I, the problem is they already made money from this. They exploited the Southeast Asian, uh, you know, law. Exploited. 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 That's a strong I word said, to use. No, okay. Here's the thing. Okay, here's the thing. The only reason they made this movie was to exploit the uh, the the Asian market to make money. The only reason they made, in a way, they they saw that how crazy rich Asians actually, you know, drove Americans mad because they're like, we have never seen this before. But every single Asian in this forum right now, tell me the truth from your heart. How many movies have you seen with the same plot as Crazy Rich Asians? Mother don't like the daughter-in-law. Hey, come on, lah, bro. That is every bloody Hindi movie I ever watched in my entire life. That's yeah. every bloody Chinese movie I ever, I ever watched in my entire life. It's the same bloody thing. Okay, just that. Americans who never watch Bollywood movies, who never watch Chinese movies, basically go like, "This is the best movie I've ever seen. So original, wow, yeah. culture." Hey, come on lah, please. It's the same thing. Like we've it's... seen it. Like we know that this. We that's why it. when we we read the ratings of Crazy Rich Asians, immediately we went like, "What? Ninety eight percent on Rotten Tomatoes." You really need to <laughs> sit down and watch some Hollywood uh, Bollywood movies. You understand? It it's a TV free drama with a budget. That's what Crazy Rich Asians. Yeah, exactly. Me. It's like basically, if y'all made Die Hard into a Bollywood movie, India would go crazy. It's same for the same reason, but it would just be considered a rip off of Die Hard. But yeah. when you make Crazy Rich Asians, which is a rip off of every bloody movie that we've ever seen, or oh, that that's lauded as the best movie in the world because Asian representation, which I understand is important. But however, I'm just saying, hey, come up with a new story, lah. Okay, the one Southeast Asian thing that you can really take away away from uh, Raya and everybody can relate to, you know, war uh, warring parties are uh, are meeting each other for the first time. What is the opening line? Are you guys hungry? Who's hungry? Hey, ah, have you guys eaten yet? Hey. And, That's a good one. Food. Yeah, and that yeah. broth that she makes with like all the different spices, uh, spices from the different. Really, it looks like tom yum. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah it looks like tom yum. Tom yum. Oh. Yeah. Tom yum, eh? Very Asian, just to to chuck everything and to make a tom yum. I did tom yum or soup bunjut. You choose one. <laughs> yeah, either all works. It did look quite tasty, uh, and I guess that's credit to the animators as well to making it look so good, almost as good as the lush greenery and the water in the movie. I love this conversation with the two additional guests. So I need a recommendation from you guys of what to watch next. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Okay, Zach, you go first. Oh, Zach, I, I already no, no, gave no, no. my Zach, recommendation. Zach gave Bling Empire. Zach, oh, Zach was okay. the first person to recommend something. But so, I have to say, yeah. uh, when I watch uh, Raya, and when Raya said Bling is my thing, I immediately like laugh because I remember Puppy. Like the Bling Empire <laughs> was so <laughs> like passion. <laughs> True, but it's between Kevin and Mo about what to watch next. So I think Kevin is. Are you older than Mo? Yes. Yeah. Um, Mo, you also only by a look, couple of years. Calm but down. Still, still, everybody, calm down. A, a feature <laughs> or a series? 
Uh, we preferred uh, because we all struggle to get through an eight-episode thing yeah. of Bridgerton. <laughs> oh. <laughs> we, we prefer. Yeah, a movie. You know what it was like, Mo. You know what it's yeah. like. <laughs> you really want a, a movie? Y'all, you think want to review is uh, Solar Flare? Oh God! <laughs> You've already said that. So, no, so no, thank you. Something a little bit more current, please. Uh, don't say two things. Don't actually just one thing. Don't say oh, Calvin J stand-up comedy. I don't know. Of course, I've seen it uh, and was awesome already. Yeah. It's, 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 <laughs> Uh, <laughs> everybody calm down okay uh, uh, you can't think of anything wait hold on uh, is more you got anything I think uh, I think Green Book came out recently on Netflix Green, Green Book? Book yeah okay Green Book it is Netflix Green Book two years ago I think if I'm not mistaken yeah, I, I, was, I wanted to see that also so yeah, the other one I was going to say was Coming to America too yeah that was, that oh, was Coming to America I yeah. should say a lot of fan oh, service Green in that one Book. The Green Book. Okay. If there's a lot of, uh, uh, what do you call that? Uh, mixed reviews for that. It's either you love it or you hate it. It's like Marmite now. So it, I haven't it, seen it yet, so I don't know. It came out a little while ago because it was in the Oscars. Yeah. Right? Ooh. What? No, but it, it only book. just what? released in it, Amazon. In Amazon, right? Coming to America. Coming to America is last Friday. Last Friday, yes. No, we're referring to the Green Book. It came oh, out in 2018 because oh, it was in the Oscars uh, and there was controversy around it. Oh, what was the controversy? Uh, Watch it and you find out. The, the, yeah, the relationship between the two characters in it. Uh, whitewashing is what they're trying to say. Mm. But, the because guy it's supposed to be, to be green, bro. Yeah, it's supposed oh. to be green. Like, uh, <laughs> ma- <laughs> yeah, you tell. Uh, final thing, we need to give a rating. So just each person has to give a rating out of 10. Uh, Mo, I want to start with you, my friend. Uh, I think I'll give it a, I'll give it a seven. Right, and The Last Dragon, 7 out of 10. Aaron, you're nodding your head. Are you in agreement there? Higher, lower? Agreement, 7. Solid 7. LeVar Burton, Levy? <laughs> 6. Okay. <laughs> Sounds like you're being generous there as well. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you add a little bit. Okay, Hadis? Uh, I would say 7.5. 7.5. Okay, a little bit higher than Mo and Aaron. Definitely higher than Levy. Uh, Carvin, the only one here who has a child. Uh, I would give it a, a generous 6, a more accurate 5.5. 5.5. Um, He's very picky about his stuff. Okay. Uh, Zach, what about yourself? Uh, I'm going to give it a 7.5. Oh, 7.5. Okay. And finally, Chief Jantan. 6.5. 6.5. I'm in agreement with Chief Jantan there. I think that we've seen better. I think that what sold this movie and has given it such a high rating is the fact that it has the representation. And I think if you go against it, people might argue against you and say you're racist. But because we are all, except for Hades here, Southeast Asian, we can be more honest. Yes. So, <laughs> yeah. Uh, that, 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 I will just leave it at that. Gentlemen and ladies, thank you very much for taking part in this. Uh, next week, it's the Green Book, something a little bit more dramatic, a little bit more serious than Riot the Last Dragon. All the best. Geektopia, Geek Squad out. Yeah.